There is more snow sitting on the ground right now than we've seen in a decade. And along the Rock River in Dodge and Jefferson counties, frankly, it is snow they don't need. Fields there are flooded. Forests that have stood for more than a century are dying and farmers are hurting. And many believe the issue is not entirely nature's fault. Did you have a question about living off the land? Our farm was established in 1856 and I'm the I'm the sixth generation to farm here. Kyle Zweig knows a bit of history in the subject. My kids will be the seventh, so we're just a few years older than the state of Wisconsin. His dairy farm in Lebanon in Dodge County wouldn't be out of place on a postcard. It's an extremely beautiful area to live in. A spot some might consider perfection if only part of it wasn't disappearing. Over the last 24 months, it's been a problem that's gotten significantly worse. Walk among the fields, you'll notice there used to be more land here. I would say just as a rough number, we've completely lost 30 acres. The Rock River, which attracted his ancestors long ago, is now threatening to wash parts of it away. Up and down the Rock River Basin, it's, it's the same problems. Along the banks, trees that have stood for more than a century are dying. Roads are closed for months due to high water. Locals say the normal twice a year flood cycle is now a year round event. Yes, something's changed. Lonnie I mean, Frederick is the Lebanon town chairman. Feet. He brought us to Harnischweger Park, <laughs> where pictures alone show what's happening is historical. This used to be just the river channel. Well, it's outside the river channel right now. We sit here with the water and it doesn't dissipate. One thing everyone agrees on, the main culprit comes from the sky. This stretch of river, which runs from the Horicon Marsh from the north through Houstisford in Lebanon before snaking its way to Watertown, usually sees an average of just over 33 inches of rainfall per year. For the past eight consecutive years, it's been above that way above that. 2018 and 2019 saw more than a foot of rain above the average. The point of contention here is the response to getting rid of all the sitting water. Nobody knows or cares what's going on in this area. That's part of the problem. And we've been fighting for about probably for the better part of 15 years trying to get somebody to pay attention. Locals say they are stuck between the rock and a hard place. It'll come all the way up to right. This area sits between two dams. Houstisford to the north and Watertown to the south. We're really at the mercy of the management of the Watertown Dam and the Houstisford Dam. Along with dams in Horicon and the lower dam in Watertown, there are four in the region with three different operators. Many here who believe are not helping drain the water. It seems like there's very little communication and uh, the, whatever happens up on the northern dams, it is, doesn't correlate to the actions occurring on the southern dams. In Watertown... If the dam wasn't even here, you would still have the flooding up in Lebanon. Thomas Price says the complaints flowing his way are from people who don't understand what's causing the water to sit. The sluice gates that are... Rice, who operates the two dams in town that make electricity, says the reason flooding persists is how Mother Nature designed the land. The main problem is that the topography here is so flat, and it is especially flat in the Lebanon, uh, north part of Exonia, up into Ashapin, in that area. It's extremely flat. Over the 20 miles for the water to travel from Horicon to Watertown, the river drops only a few feet. And Rice says the topography resembles a bowl. He says the top lip of the bowl closest to him is upstream of Watertown, which his dams have no effect on. He knows because he's tried. We have held the water lower than we have to, and upstream we still have flooding. At my home, we have flooding. Rice is not just a dam operator, but also happens to be a farmer who lives along the river. He says he's lost hundreds of acres to a problem he would fix if he could. There's no easy solution. The state agrees. The solution to the problem, in my viewpoint, is, is not something that the dams in their current configuration can 
holy solve. Uriah Monday is a water management engineer with the DNR. He explains, these are no Hoover Dam. All have only a few gates able to change river levels by just a few inches. He says there are possible solutions. So it is possible. It is possible. But there's a... Uh, <laughs> As you can imagine, those would be expensive propositions. New dams or dredging would cost millions and could just shift the issue elsewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way. It's, it never used to be, and so that's why we're stuck in this quandary right now. Those along the river aren't giving up. They've hired their own engineers who they hope can find some solution to draining the water, promising it won't keep them from working this land. We are in this for the long haul and we're, we've are we adapted some of our management practices to deal with it, but it would be much better if, if, if the problem didn't exist. The one thing that could fix this issue right now is less rain and snow. But of course, if you have too little rain, that can cause big problems for the farmers as well. The issue's complicated. Some wonder more water maybe could be held in the Horicon Marsh, for example, but that could have an impact on the ecosystem the federal government is in charge of maintaining. Others are studying the effect other rivers that flow into the rock here have. Landowners say at the bare minimum, this issue deserves attention. Yeah, because it's gonna take some time to figure that out, Ben. Yeah. Really interesting insight there. Thanks for that story.